Well, hopefully I got your attention today by being in black and white. In today's video, we're gonna talk about using multiple lights to create maximum contrast to make your images jump off the page in black and white. It's really popular right now to use Rembrandt lighting with really soft light and decreased saturation. But if you take that same image and convert it to black and white, you're gonna end up with a muddy gray mess. When you're shooting in monochrome, contrast is key. There are a number of ways that you can create contrast in the studio, but I love to use multiple lights, like right now, with a hard light on some of the modifiers, and then I will refine that look with negative and positive fill using V-flats or white pieces of foam core or generally commercially available flags. That way I can create a full range of tones and make my images pop. So today I'm gonna to show you three variants on the same basic setup that will get you a trio of very distinctive looks. And then we'll finish things off with a creative film noir setup. Back in 2008, I figured out all on my own that I could create a white background that also lit my subject from behind by placing a large softbox right behind the person I was photographing. I remember at the time thinking that I had come up with this great original idea and I'd really discovered something and I would never show a behind the scenes photo with this setup uh, back then on the uh, very popular model mayhem. But thankfully, over time, I became more confident in my skills and I stopped being so secretive. And also, I started to notice that a lot of other people were using the same exact technique and that my original idea was, well, just not that original. So you start off First of all, by putting your subjects about a foot in front of a large softbox. And when it's illuminated from behind, it will create not only a white surface, but it will also wrap around your subjects and give the equivalent of two edge lights and a hair light. Then you can use whatever modifier you would like to light the front of the person, if you even want to light the front of the person in the first place. I found the trick is to only have the softbox in the back when metered right next to the surface of the light, about a stop brighter than the camera settings that you're using. Anything more and you'll end up with haze and anything less and you'll get wrinkles on the diffusion fabric. Keep in mind that older lenses are gonna haze more than newer lenses and cheap filters and non-professional glass are gonna have that problem as well. So if you can use the highest quality lens and the newest one that you have, you'll end up with the best results. I haven't had the greatest results from zoom lenses, but they might work for you. I always end up using primes. Now for the main light or the front light, you could just end up bouncing light off of a round reflector. But you're gonna have a hard time finding the exact position of your subject or that reflector based on the skin tone of your subject. So I would suggest just using a second light if you have one, and that way you have full control of the situation. My favorite modifier to use behind my subjects is the Elenchrome Indirect 190 centimeter Octabox, mostly because it's so large. But sometimes I will also use a fairly inexpensive and old Shamira four and a half by six foot softbox. You could alternatively use an umbrella with a diffusion sock, but really the choice is up to you. I just like to have the modifier be as large as I can so I end up having to do uh, very little Photoshop in the end. For the first setup, I placed the model, David, in front of the softbox and then boomed a Mola Seti 28 inch beauty dish directly over my camera. This was to create a dramatic portrait that looked like it was taken with about five or so lights. Four on the subject and one or two on the background. Then I added a 20 by 30 inch piece of white foam core right below his chest and out of the frame 
to fill in the shadows. This setup will create a lot of contrast because you will have a full range of tones from white to dark on your subject's face. One of the things I hate seeing in my photos is light from the edge lights spilling around and hitting the side of the model's nose. So if this happens in this setup, just move the model closer to the camera and that will increase the angle of incidence of the light coming from behind and eliminate the problem. Because the model will be further away from the softbox, you may need to increase the power of the backlight and you'll also need to move the front light or the main light closer to the camera. While using a large softbox as your background is a simple way to get a nice white setup, it doesn't allow you to control the brightness of the lights hitting the model's features. So in a commercial shoot, I will use a white paper backdrop lit by two lights, one on each side. Then I'll use one or two hair lights and then two edge lights. This way I can have total control over every aspect of the photo. In addition, if I wanted to swap out the color of the background, I can easily do that because I'm not lighting that background from behind, I'm lighting it from the front. For our second setup, I'm gonna start off by placing a V-flat, black side out, directly in the middle of our background softbox. And that is so that I can make sure that there's light coming from the left and from the right and also uh, from the top. If you used a homemade four by eight foot V-flat, it would probably cover up way too much of the surface of the modifier and it just wouldn't work. And that's why I like using the V-flats from V-flat World, which are only about 40 inches wide and 80 inches tall. I will definitely put a link to those in the description and hopefully yeah, you guys will check those out. Now, if you don't have a V-flat, you could use black foam core from the art supply store, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to mount it or you're just gonna have to lean it up against the surface of the modifier, provided that it is, you know, tall enough. You could also use black fabric, but the whole point of all of this is that the black surface is gonna be the background for this look. First, I placed our model Akshay in front of the black V-flat and had him turn to his right with the left side facing the camera. And then I had him turn a little bit more to his right so that more of the light would escape around the left side of the V-flat, illuminating his left eye. Then I moved myself over a little bit to the left too so that I was basically perpendicular to him, not the softbox. In this example, I photographed the model shirtless and cropped just above his jeans so that it would give the illusion of nudity. I determined my exposure by reading the volume of light falling on the model's face and then set up my camera accordingly. And then I just adjusted the brightness of the light so that I could get the perfect silhouette. Now, depending on your subject's skin tone, this could be an under or over exposure it just depends on your level of taste. A lot of times when I'm using a softbox for my background, I will use an aluminum kit stand because a C stand is often too tall. If you need to get more light on top of your model's head, you can simply just raise the level of the stand and that will increase the brightness spilling over the top of the V-flat. If you're in a room with a lot of lightly colored reflective surfaces, you may need to place V-flats, black side out towards the model around the front, or you may need to put them on the floor or to use black fabric to block light from reflecting back into the shadows. Now let's go on to our next setup, a very dramatic headshot. I created this by posing our model, a mirror, in front of a softbox with a 20 by 30 inch piece of foam core as my background. The only reason why I didn't use a V-flat and a larger softbox was because I was being lazy and used my 120 centimeter light motive, which is also the light I'm using to light my face right now, as my background. 
So because it was a fairly, uh, fairly small, compact setup, this was a little bit of a challenge. I then lit a mirror from the front using a nice photo SN29 optical snoot with a vertical strip gobo. With this modifier, I like to use an LED modeling light so that you can see where your stripe is going to land and you can keep your modifier from overheating. In the past, I've used halogen modeling lights and they get really hot and I've actually melted part of the SN29. So if you can, I would really suggest using LED modeling lights. Now you might be surprised to know that this generic modifier only costs $200. Brand name snoots like this will cost hundreds, but you can find this particular one on Amazon and it comes in a Bowens mount, which you then can modify to other mounts fairly easily with cheap adapters. If you're interested, I have a review about it and I'll uh, post it right up here so that you can go ahead and check it out. To finish this look, I added a V-flat white side out on camera left for Phil. The light falling on his hair from behind is probably one to two stops darker than the light falling on his face. You'll want to adjust the power of your light so that the rim light is noticeable, but it's not too bright. A lot of times people will ask me what the settings were for each light, and if you haven't figured it out already, I don't keep notes of this because I actually find that the input power that you're using is fairly irrelevant. I get it that perhaps in outdoors or something, you might want to know, is this something where you're going to need half power or full power or quarter power or 500 watt seconds or something. But if I tell you that in an indoor situation, in a particular modifier, I use power setting, you know, uh, 4.1 or 1 16th or something like that, that information is going to be fairly useless unless you know the exact distance and you have the same modifier in the same room. So that's why I'm just sort of giving you a general guide as to what you're looking for or the starting point that you'll want to use when you set up your lights. For the fourth and final setup, I created this really cool film noir look that's sort of reminiscent of old Hollywood detective movies. To light our model Spencer and our stylist Pablo, the whisper was all his idea, I used a standard reflector with a 10 degree grid for my main light. That way the light would be focused on the two of them. Then I added a 3 foot strip box above the background pointing back towards the camera to create a hair light. The selection of this modifier was probably a mistake because I feel that the light coming from the softbox lacks the proper grittiness that is required for the scene. So if I were to do this all over again, I would have used a standard reflector with a grid just to increase the specularity of the highlights coming from this light source. The light falling on the top of his head was probably equal to the light coming from the main light. The next thing I did was to boom a light over the set with a snoot to light up the model's whiskey glass and to simulate the light coming from the desk lamp. This generic modifier was pretty inexpensive and I picked it up on eBay, but if you don't have one, you could just use a standard reflector or a grid reflector with a fairly narrow beam grid, let's say maybe five or 10. The exposure from this light on the table from this modifier was probably the same brightness as the main light. Now as a total aside, originally I thought this photo would be in color and so I used a yellow gel to sort of heighten the light from this modifier to create more realness and cohesiveness with the desk lamp. And finally, I placed an optical snoot far off to my left with a mini blind gobo to sort of give a nighttime detective feel. Now, if you don't have an optical snoot, you could always use a small reflector, or I should say a standard reflector with a narrow grid far away and then real mini blinds just offset. The further that light is away from the mini blinds, the sharper the shadows will be. Anyway, guys, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe and the bell and all of those things. And as always, 
wear your mask, call your mom, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon.